All right. Um, <clears throat> so today I'm doing a little video piece in response to a post uh, post I found on Reddit that asks people who major anthropology, what do you do currently? Uh, ideally, people who are currently in the field but um, didn't get too many responses. They're kind of random. So um, I'm not in the field of anthropology, but um, We'll be happy to respond. So it's my current job. Um, so I work at a nonprofit uh, called Korean Research Center, and um, we are. It's kind of relative, but we are kind of small in the overall field of nonprofits, but could be like medium size in the overall field of like organizing. Um, we have, I think, twelve staff. I think, twelve. I think we have like 12 or 10 around there and um, so in, when the organization is this small it really doesn't matter what your title is and it doesn't really matter even what your program area is like what your department is um, because it's like <clears throat> this is what I would describe to people it's like total soccer in like in like the Netherlands soccer style which is everyone goes on the offense, everyone goes on the defensive, and then, you know, it's like everyone runs everywhere, and it's very tiring, but uh, it's kind of fun too. Uh, my title is, I, I, I made my title um, about four years ago, uh, Director of Digital, so I focus on the our organization's database, uh, computer-based database, but that's still, even though that's my main area, that's still like 15%. Or twenty percent of my work, and like uh, my work is like spread thin through a bunch of support roles, product program areas, and a bunch of like almost seasonal program areas. So yeah, how long have I been in this role? Uh, I think since two thousand thirteen. I think twenty thirteen. So three years. Yeah, three years, kind of. Maybe 2014, two years. Uh, how do you land this position? I think it overlaps with the question that comes afterwards. So I'm going to skip it. And uh, how, what do I enjoy most of our job? So um, <clears throat> our organization is pretty old. Uh, it's at least 34 years old. But because of the way politics plays out in the progressive Korean American scene, uh, or is a progressive Korean American grassroots organization. Because of the way it plays out, there's been several shakedowns, uh, internal shakedowns in the 90s. And as a result of it, the leadership strata or the leadership layer is very thin. Um, and uh, as a result of that, I think I mean, that's not a good thing, but um, uh, for me, uh, the way that has worked out is the organization has relatively quite a lot of resources and quite a lot of um, things to work with, a lot of supporters, uh, quite a lot of name recognition in the community and so forth. So as someone who works with database, there's a lot of like um, matter to, to mold. Um, but there's very little hierarchy that makes it painful to try out different things. So I remember when I first came to the organization uh, in 2006, 10 years ago, uh, I was an intern. And um, because people saw me as more tech savvy, people said, me, hey, why don't you take care of our website? This is when we're having the million people marches. So we're having, uh, we were organizing like thousands of people and we had like, people filling out the streets, uh, protesting for immigration reform. And um, we were posting all these updates. We had a big rally in January 6th, another rally on February 2nd in front of the RNC, another protest, another protest. We had all these pictures I got to share and, and so forth. And uh, I was updating the website and the website really sucked. It, it, it was, uh, everything that you posted was plain text. I was like, how am I supposed to attach? Oh, well, you could attach picture, but there was like, you know, there was, anyway, it really sucked. So I was like, you know, I can't do my job properly with this 
outdated software. Can we please switch to WordPress? So I, I was back right before graduating col from college, I was playing around with WordPress, uh, this um, w online publishing software. Uh, around then, the version was 1.5. And um, I just did an oral proposal to the executive director. The executive director is the person who makes the final decision on things that are important, like finances and, and things like that. So the website is pretty important. So, and then they said, I told them, I was saying, go ahead. <laughs> so I worked over 10 weekends, I think. I spent like 10 Saturdays working on it and uh, got it out the website. So basically kept the outside look, but got it out the innards of the website and replace it with this new platform, which for me is, was a bit of a gamble. And for the organization, it was an even bigger gamble. I mean, I'm just an intern. I just started. I, I just had like three months at the organization as proposing uh, a, a platform change, which I think the executive director didn't fully understand. But he believed in the outcomes that I wanted to get on. And I was also for the outcome, which is once we do the switch, you know, we'll be able to embed YouTube videos, we'll put uh, pictures, and have way more freedom on the kind of things that we can post. And uh, that was a very, that was like a defined experience. Um, like, wow, this organization really wants to try out things to make things better and to make things work. And um, yeah, I think that, and I had more experience like that uh, as we went along. And I think that's what made me stay for such a long time. And uh, we have, I have, I have had, the opportunity to try out lots of uh, cool, fun things while getting the work done um, and like bringing innovation in the work. Uh, do you work in a team or in the? Uh, it's a. Uh, mm, so because we all work together, it's it is a team environment. So most people do understand what each other person's uh, does, and there's a lot of and because we. Uh, it's, I, I might end up spending more time about what we do in the organization, which I think is not the scope of this. But anyway, uh, the nature of the work leads to team, team environment. But my specialty, which is databases and websites, is a super narrow field in, in the organization, and um, which tangentially touches on other people. But like when I start talking about the MySQL backend and we need to upgrade the the, the Drupal modules and so forth. No one else will understand uh, what's going on there. So it it, it some it is kind of uh, independent work too. Uh, because I, I'm the only person who, who who will be able to understand what's going on there. So um, so I don't know. When I'm working on those things, I prefer to work isolated. Uh, in an isolated environment where I can focus because otherwise uh, there's people walking up to me and saying you know this doesn't work I need your support with this or what's this and the one that really annoyed me was what's the Wi-Fi password I'm like you know the Wi-Fi password you should memorize but if I can memorize it can can we please do something where I don't get asked about the Wi-Fi password about every three hours so I printed the Wi-Fi password and put it on the walls of the office um, so uh yeah it's it's kind of fun it's a mix it's a hybrid model uh what do i like least about our job so um we're a relatively small organization and relatively underfunded um we have uh, at our organization where we work we have all these great ambitions so um uh our executive director is always dreaming about you know we should there's so many good things that we could do in the community. You know, we should start a school, a grad community school, a community hospital, a community bank, by which I think he means credit unions. Uh, we should do all these things. We should build also an apartment for seniors because um, uh, there's a great need uh, for seniors. We just, uh, and, and, the, and that idea came around like 11 years ago, and we just got around building this uh, apartment. So we, uh, have built uh, two uh, apartments for 65 units and uh, we enter that apartment in the first floor uh, as our office 
so we have all these things. So whenever we get more resources, and by really more resources, we mean like you um, typically more money and more people, like skilled uh, people uh, who can do things. Um, we stretch it out a lot. <laughs> Um, because there's a lot of and, and there are a lot of things that we're giving out and I think people are like you know we're always like well you know I wish we had this much more and we can do all these things and um, because of that I think everyone's stretched very thin and oftentimes um, I, I always think I spend a lot of time thinking how can we get the most out of the resources that we have and um Whenever you do that, there's always this long-term investment versus short-term getting it done. Like um, people spend time in different tasks that are relatively lower efficiency that could be done faster. But in order to be done faster, you need to build up. Like you need to code some Excel spreadsheet, or you need to create a template or you need a proper database as opposed to a clipboard. And um, building those things takes more time than doing it once or typically even doing it 10 times. But once you get it done, then all your tasks combined will be much faster. But um, so I, I, what I don't like oftentimes is that we have to take that plunge. Like we have to go the less efficient route because right now there's not enough resources to build that infrastructure and um that's always very frustrating and oftentimes i, I even can see it i'm like I, I i see like a team of three people they're working on a project and it's not the ideal they're not working with the ideal set of tools for that project and if i had 10 hours to provide support they would be able to save way more than 10 hours in that four month project but i at, at our current prioritization of our organization we can't afford to spend 10 hours on that so they must work unless they can come up with their own which oftentimes is not the case they must work with this less efficient tool set so yeah that's very frustrating uh my major in college i went to college 2001 through 2005 uh, and I came from Chile um, and I went to college in the US uh, my first major was uh, I was trying to double major in philosophy and chemistry <clears throat> I thought I was very smart like uniquely smart and when I upon entering coming to college I realized uh, no <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and classes are no longer as easy as it was in high school um, but I had no way of gauging that I knew it was gonna be harder but I didn't know how much so I maximize well, uh, so even though I didn't have to I took on a foreign language and took on philosophy and chemistry and I thought well can those two fields connect and I was doing some research and I was like oh they seem to be connecting in neuroscience which sounds pretty cool so maybe I'll try to go that route and cover two fields instead of just one and that was super hard uh, I dropped chemistry after one year and after two years I also dropped philosophy and then I switched to anthropology so I had to cram my major in two years um, I felt that I had more transferable skills and by doing and whenever every time I tell people this people laugh at me but I think it's true that in the social sciences and the humanities so in the social sciences sociology anthropology is psychology in social science in our campus they're in the natural science uh, building but anyway I think by anyway by 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 departmental division they were in the social science but they're like over there with biology uh, because they needed to run their lab rats. That's why they needed access to those facilities. Um, so, yeah, I, I switched to social science <laughs> to make more money. And it was also more fun. It felt more tangible what we were doing um, than in philosophy. And, uh, yeah, that's why it changed. And I think it, it was it was for the, for the better. I was very introverted. And I think 
taking anthropology and interviewing lots of people forced me to like talk to people and build some some basic uh, skills and that, that was a good thing uh, career path leading to my current job um, uh, um, because I spoke Spanish I started volunteering to just get some, some any experience I started volunteering at a uh, I was interpreting from English between English and Spanish at a immigration legal clinic based at a church in Minneapolis um, so I did that for a year and then <clears throat> I interned at a community organization there called Resource Center of the Americas um, working on like curriculum research publications uh, worker rights consultation um, and I I, I felt I liked that work and the left winning left leaning uh, left leaning uh, was Songyang in English. Um, well, I I wanted to connect doing for for a living the kinds of like working professionally on the kinds of uh, work and activism and organizing. Um, and uh, at first, I so I, I thought, well, based on my what I have served in, in Minneapolis was, well, this field is dominated by labor unions. At least that's that's what the scene was in the Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Twin Cities. So I want to work at a labor union, and um, I'm not sure if I want to start as an organizer, but like it's kind of weird because most people start off. As someone working in the field like in a factory or in a service service area and from there they grow as leaders but there's people coming from outside too who want to contribute to the movement and um, so I wanted to work at a labor union either as an organizer or researcher and unfortunately I didn't have the skills to do research and in order to do organizing I didn't have a car I don't know how to drive so that kind of blocked my um, career path and I was working for work for about six months and then um, ended up interning at the Korean Resource Center and I've I had a great experience there and have stayed uh, there since then so I think that's my career path and I, I was moved around from program area to program area at KRC that's uh, a lot of people revolve around different program areas uh, depending on the focus so I did uh, consult helping seniors like uh, elders apply for medical party to provide consultation to undocumented immigrant students going to college organizing the students to do campaigns uh, working with a national office to do immigration reform dream act campaign work uh, elections work and then from there steer towards like the data and database and website work so in, in all within the the current organization where i currently work you know this question? I mean, a mythology class, blah blah blah. <laughs> Is this trolling? <laughs> I don't understand at all. Who's James Fraser? How do you pronounce this guy's name? James Fraser? Fraser? <clears throat> Sorry, never heard of it. So that's it. Good luck.